Hello, my name is Pilot Lars, and I'm going to be doing another short Milky Tracker tutorial. Um, I had done one previously, and it was a, suited more towards like people who had just first loaded up the program for the first time. So, uh, if you find yourself in this tutorial a bit confused, or maybe I'm going over something too fast, and you haven't seen the previous ones, then there it's good material to check out. I know they're kind of long, but they're informative. And you know, there's not too many decent tutorials out there for this for this uh, program, so they might be the only ones you find. Anyhow, in this, I wanted to cover the volume uh, um, the in instrument or the volume uh, envelope, and I wanted to go over how the arpeggios work in Milky Tracker. I'll start with that one first. It's more fun. Um, it took me a while to figure this out. I'm not quite sure why. I can be slow at times, but uh, once I figured it out, it made me want to compose a lot of songs. I'm just going to make a, um, a waveform here, I'm not too particular on how it sounds, it's just for, just for example. Alright. I'll start on F. First I'm going to lay out a chord. This is what we're going to want our arp to sound like later. Just down a little bit. That's our chord. We want those exact same notes to be played in an arpeggio because they, they sound good. So we're going to put down only the F4. We want to put down the lowest note that's part of the, the, part of the arp that you want played. And then what you need to do is you need to figure out how many half notes the next higher up notes are in comparison to this first note. So A4 to F4 is 1, 2, 3, 4. Half notes are the black, you know, every step, the black keys and the white keys. A whole note would be like D4 to E4, skipping the minor in between. But, but just to uh, be sure. Alright, so four. And then you want to find out how many half notes C5 is from F4. So end one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or C5. That's seven. 47 is a very common value that you're going to be putting in here. 37 is another one. It gives it more of a minor sound. Um, but this is what the ARP version sounds like. You should be able to hear each each of these three notes in that one, this one sound, this one uh, channel. If you were to do replace this with the three, you, sh you should hear kind of a minor sound to it. You can play with this a bit more if you're doing more abstract music, and this applies to anything. Like no matter what, no matter what notes you're on, it goes all the way up to F. I've never had a reason to use, well, what I mean by goes all the way up to F is if you're not familiar with other, other, uh, numbering scales than decimal, which is what, you know, we use most of the time, hexadecimal is a highest value of, uh, 16, and since you can't use numbers past 9, you have to go into letters, that's why you see like the A through F down here, you would, uh, C is a good example on the right, C, C which is equal to 12, and there are 12 notes in the chromatic scale, so a C in the far right would be 12 half notes higher than G, G3, so it would be a G4, so you should be able to hear these, uh, two distinct notes in there. Decimal formats, chromatic scales, I'm not too good with music theory, I've probably said this already. They're kind of hard to explain, so if I didn't do the best job of it, feel free to like, make a comment and I'll write it out as, as good as I can. Um, if, you, if you don't, if hexadecimal pisses you off, um, it, it does to me, it pisses me off, I deal with CCNA networking, so. Um, you can disable it somewhere here in the options. Uh, another thing I wanted to go over was the volume envelope, like I said. It start, we'll turn it on first, 
and I'll leave it on to delete this. Right, we have one constant sound. We have these we have this line with two boxes at the end of it. And it right right then it was all the way up top. If we were to move it all the way down, you'd have no sound at all. If you moved one end higher than the other, it would fade in like that. Um you can give it a bit more dynamic by make it a, make it a bit more dynamic by adding things to it like this. You can add any number of these boxes and lines to it that you want. So that you can give this works really good with hi-hats. Um give it a much more of a, a, a poppier sound. Um, another thing I wanted to go over was the this, this rectangle thing here. You might have accidentally hit it if you ever hit caps lock while you're working working in one of these channels. Um, what this does is it triggers the sound to fade out at a certain point, which we'll set here. This can be really good so you're not making three or four different instruments up here just to get one one sound out of it. You can just do it all in one. It's a bit a um, bit more difficult to sit up uh, set up if you're new to this, but it makes things a lot, heck of a lot easier in the long run. Plus, you can make these instruments and you can save them and just load them up anytime. You can save them by clicking the save button up here, and it saves them as like a, a Milky Tracker XI file. Or I, for, I think that's the extension of them. You can also save over here and it'll save it as a wave. Um, but this, this little little rectangle here, we can use this by creating a sustain point and then fading it out. This rec this little box here is the fourth one, so we will change the sustain point to four, or rather three. Rather, you can see because of this it's like a faded line that changes along with it, and once. Actually, we can move the rectangle down here. It'll give it a bit more emphasis on what I'm trying to describe. It'll stay. This note will stay as loud as it can, as loud as it can, until it's this little rectangle, and it'll start to fade out. You can also loop it. You'd want to put the start on the third, which is where the rectangle would be and then the end of it would be the fourth. If you didn't want it to constantly loop, um, you could make this a bit longer and have it actually fade out properly. That way it won't come out, it won't, won't come back. Um, it's a lot easier to do than instead using like the, the volume down thing, which is a pain. I don't really know if there's a difference between using the D key or the minor. The minor seems to work a lot faster, but this way you get more of a visual. You know, you get you get to see it visually, which for me works a lot better. These same commands work for the panning as well. It's the exact same setup. You can change it to. I don't know if this has stereo. Oh, I gotta enable it. I don't know if stereo is enabled and you can hear the difference in that, but the panning can be a lot of fun to mess around with actually. It can if you're only working with four channels, which is what I what I would suggest if you're just starting out. Um, the more that you can do with if you can work better with four channels, then you're gonna be a lot a lot uh, a lot better with Milky Tracker in the long run. But uh it can make your make everything sound a lot deeper than it actually is and a lot more dynamic. Anyway, like I said, if anybody has any questions or they want me to go over something a bit clearer, maybe write it out, or if they want me to do a tutorial on anything else in particular, just feel free to send me a message or let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll do my best at it. Alright, thank you for watching.